This video will answer the most common SEO questions. So question number one is, what is SEO? SEO stands for Search Engine Optimization. It is the way that Google presents information to people by searching for those information beforehand and storing those information. So when you search for those information, Google then provides you with websites that has answers to the questions you're asking. So information could be in different ways. Information could be you're looking to buy a particular product and Google has that information stored and then presents it to you. And if you're looking for news, videos, whatever information you're trying to find, Google will match your search query with the information that best answers the question that you're looking to answer. So how does SEO work? SEO is a very complicated thing when it comes to search algorithm. So basically Google has certain criteria that they use to grade and match information. So if you have a website selling if you have a website selling particular products it's going to be multiple websites that sell that product so what google would do is grade those websites and when someone asks questions then give the best website with the best answer to possibly answer that question that's what google will present to the person so the algorithm that google uses to do this has certain criteria that your website has to pass then you're able to rank high in google you mentioned the search algorithm. That term sounds very scary. Can you explain <laughs> what it is? Yeah, so search algorithm is the, the principles or the criteria that your website needs to adhere to so that Google will be able to rank it. One of the key important elements is like speed, is like the quality of the content you have, and is like trust as well. There are a lot of information when it comes to search algorithm, like criteria that you need to fill out. Most instances, there's like 200 criteria, and you just need to make sure that the most important criteria you match, and those are the algorithm, the, the criteria that Google will use to rank you high when people search for things that you sell or information that you provide. There is a lot of information out there about different types of SEO. Can you tell us a little bit about the key different types? So SEO is divided into two um, aspects. You have the on-page SEO and then you have the off-page SEO. And then on the on-page SEO side, you have technical SEO and then you have like optimizing page specific elements. And then on the off-page off side is basically you're trying to get referral to your website. So links from say different website that people browse and then links to you. So that's what is called off-page link building. So the, both of them are very, very important. And those are what makes up the algorithm and the, the search criteria that Google used to rank websites. So you need to understand and optimize your website for technical SEO, on-page elements, and then link building. So what is link building? So link building is basically you creating content or assets and putting it on another website and then having a link pointing to your website. Say for example, if you're a big brand and you get published in like the Harvard Business Review or the newspaper, those newspaper will have links. When they talk about your website or they mention your brand, they will have a link that will point to your website. So when people are reading those articles that are not on your website, when they click on that link, they arrive on your website and that potentially would lead to them maybe buying something from you or being aware of your brand and Google pays attention to this links because if people are talking about you and pointing links to you it's a, a sign to Google that your website is a reputable website that needs to be ranked high in its algorithm. Um, as part of um, off-page SEO um, there is a lot of information around keyword research yeah. and um, anchor text. Could yeah. you tell us a little bit about those two terms? So anchor text, when you, when people say anchor text is basically the information on the link pointing to your website. Say I mentioned earlier on that if you have a brand or a brand article or a news article in another website, if they link to you, say for example, through the name of your website or through a keyword, that is an anchor text. And Google expects your anchor text to be natural. So it's not just one single anchor text. 
that's one of the criteria Google looks at as well. So the text pointing to your website from other website needs to be natural and needs to be a variation of keywords that is relevant to what you do, as well as brand terms as in the name of your company. You referred earlier to on-page SEO and you yeah. mentioned the technical aspects of it. Could you tell us a bit about the technical SEO? So technical SEO is, as the name implies, is fixing technical issues on your website. So one of the things that Google looks at when ranking a website is the ability of, for Google to be able to access information on that website. And a website that has issues with Google crawling it to provide that information Technical SEO is what will help you identify those problems and technical SEO is what you do to fix those problems. So if you have, say for example, a very slow website, then Google will find it difficult to crawl those websites fast. And Google will also know that when people visit your website, that the experience is not going to be very good. So Google wants to give people fast loading website. So from a technical perspective, technical SEO will help you identify those issues that are uh, uh, that is making your website not load faster and technical SEO is what you do to fix those kind of technical problems. It's a broad uh, field of study in terms of technical SEO. So it's, there's a list of things you need to do to be able to correct technical SEO issues. And there's certain tools that can help you do that so you don't have to do that manually. You've put a lot of em emphasis there on the speed at which a page is loading. So what is page speed and why is it so important? So page speed is the amount of time that it takes for people to load your website when they t click on a link or they type in your website. So if it takes longer, people are not patient. For that reason, they might decide to leave. And that's one criteria that Google looks like. So pay, your website needs to load at least within four seconds and people should be able to interact with your website very, very quickly. And one of the reasons why Google emphasizes page speed is because of people now access website through mobile phones and other um, electronic devices. It's not just computers alone. And when people are outdoors browsing the internet with their mobile phone, the, the speed of their internet is not very, very powerful. So they need your website to be able to load really fast. And that's what page speed is about. It also links with technical SEO. You're able to optimize the speed of your website when you implement good technical SEO to kind of increase and improve the speed and flexibility of elements on your websites. You mentioned earlier that there's a lot of tools that can help with different aspects of SEO. What are, in your experience, the best tools? So when it comes to SEO tools, SEO tools are divided into the on-page tools as well as the off-page tools. Some tools do everything, but you, there's some tools that are also free and some are paid for. You have tools like Screaming Frog that will help you with technical SEO. You have tools like Hrefs, SEM Rush, Deep Crawl, Bright Edge. So they're enterprise tool and they're smaller tool. It depends on what you're trying to achieve. Some tools do everything and some tools are like specialist tool. And some tools are like Google specific tools that will help you from a Google's perspective. So you just need to match what you're looking for. You don't need a lot of tools. In my experience, you just need just two tools, a tool that is very good with technical SEO and a tool that is very, very good with keyword research. So one of the tools we hear a lot about is the Google Search Console. Can you tell us a little bit about that? So, so Google Search Console is a free tool. It, it's a tool that Google provides to websites that you can use to understand how Google visualizes your website. So if your website have errors or issues, or if Google has problems accessing certain pages on your website. So this is a tool that will give you the information, the technical on-page information that you need to identify issues on your website and fix those issues. And this information provided by Google Search Console is the most important tool because Google is basically telling you, this is what we think about your website from an SEO perspective. That's interesting. Um, digital budget holders often have to make a trade-off between SEO and paid advertising. Could you clarify what the difference is between SEO and paid advertising and is one better than the other? Um, that's a good question. When you talk about SEO, search engine optimization, there's this perspective, this pers 
there's this assumption that SEO is free. You need to invest money in SEO and SEO is long term. What I mean by this is you need to continuously work on SEO to maintain and achieve a high ranking. And when it comes to paid search, because you're paying to get those traffic, those traffic are more intent focused. They're more ready to buy, ready to do something, but they're not cheap either. So you need to balance SEO and PPC. If you have a particular keyword that you're struggling to rank for, you can use paid search to get to a higher place in Google. And then if you have some keywords that you can use SEO to rank for, you can then use SEO. So they both work hand in hand. One is not better than the other. Although one is more expensive, one is cheaper, but in the long run, for you to really get a good ROI on your marketing investment, you need to balance both. I would recommend to not spend too much on paid search, but balance it out. Keywords that rank well on SEO, you can continue, continuously optimize for that. And for paid search, you can then approach keywords that are very competitive, that you can't rank for, but that are intent focused, that you get instant conversion. That's my, my, my experience and my opinion. Approach keywords with high conversion on a paid search perspective. If the cost per acquisition aligns, if it, you're not just wasting money, you just need to look at your numbers to make sure you're targeting the right keywords with paid search as well as SEO. Obviously, all digital marketing spend focuses on getting the website to rank as high as possible on yes. Google. So what makes a website rank? That's a good question. When you look at criteria that makes a website rank, I talked earlier on about the algorithm search criteria and certain things that you need to take. So there are a lot of things you need to do to make your website rank. Number one, you need to target the right customer. So it's one thing to rank. It's another thing not to be getting the results you want from a business perspective. So targeting the right keywords, if you're reputable, if you have a strong domain authority within this space, you target the right keywords. And you also make, need to make sure that your website is accessible from Google's perspective. So there's something called crawlability. You need to make sure that your website from a crawlability perspective is accessible to Google. And then the indexability as well. That means the website that are indexed on Google. So for you to rank high, you need to have important pages that are ranking high in Google. So you need to do a lot of on-page SEO as well as link building to make sure that your doing what Google wants. Essentially, if you do what Google wants, you're going to rank, but there's no automatic approach to it. You need to be patient because there are a lot of people that are trying to rank on Google. So for one thing, if you're ranking number one at one at a particular time, and if your competitors are doing things that are that Google likes, that means Google would outrank you, your, their competitors over you. So ranking on Google means continuously updating, refreshing your content, providing value. Your target here is the customer, not Google. So when you're optimizing your website and you, you really want to rank high, make sure you're giving information that people are actually looking for, you're presenting that information. And as soon as Google realizes that, then they're going to automatically rank you. But you need to also understand the environment where you compete in. There's certain websites that are very strong and powerful, and it's going to be difficult for you to outrank them. So I'll talk more about how you can outrank those kind of websites in certain situation, but there's a strategic approach to it. So it sounds like SEO is quite simple on a conceptual level, but in practice it is relatively complex and it's definitely um, an ongoing activity. Obviously with the marketing um, budgets being spent um, on these types of activities, what metrics define success for SEO? What are the kinds of things that budget holders should track to know that their budget is actually doing? What That's a good question. When it comes to SEO, there's a lot of vanity metrics that is associated with it. The most important metric that you want to look at from a business perspective is conversion. You just want to track one metric. Whatever SEO activity you're doing, you want to identify, is it giving you the conversion from a customer acquisition perspective? But before you get that conversion, there's certain other smaller metrics that you need to 
consider. You need to look at, okay, the quality and the volume of the traffic you're getting from search engine. Are you getting the right number of traffic? Are you getting those traffics from the right location? Are those traffic coming from your target audience? So your KPI needs to go from the number of links as well that you're getting because not all your traffic will come directly from people searching on Google. People could be on another website and if they're looking for information and they're ready to buy, if there's a link on those pages that they're researching on that takes them to your website, then there's a potential that when they arrive on your website, they buy what they're looking for. So you also want to pay attention to the links and the quality of links that you're able to get to your website. So I mentioned earlier on about technical SEO that's another metric that you need to focus on the, the the quality of your technical seo in terms of your website quality from a speed perspective from a crawlability perspective indexability perspective those metrics are smaller metrics that add up to the overall metrics which is conversion there's no value in you ranking page one number one of google and getting all the traffic in the world if you're not converting then what's the purpose of SEO? So the primary purpose from a business perspective is leads, conversion, and money in the bank. So that's the most important metrics metric. Can you give us some top tips on how to implement SEO? What are the key considerations? That, that's a good thing, a good question. When you're looking to implement SEO, the number one thing you want to focus on, as I mentioned earlier on, is conversion. So you want to make sure that what leads to conversion essentially is how you're able to convince people to buy on your website. And the only way to do that is to provide them with good information, good quality information. So the bedrock of good SEO is quality content and content that kind of gives good value. And once people are able to find your content, once Google is able to crawl your content and realize that your content provides value to the end user, then you're able to rank. That is the foundation, good quality content. But for Google to be able to access your content, you need to have good websites. That's where the technical SEO comes into play. You, your website needs to be accessible to Google, to humans, to people using different devices. So there's no one answer to the question. You have to do all good things about SEO to be able to rank. And you have to continuously do it. It's not like you do it and then forget it. You need continuous optimization of your website. You need to continuously produce good quality content. I see a lot of websites that don't have good quality, good quality content and that kind of makes them struggle when it comes to ranking and your content doesn't have to just reside on your website alone you need that's why off page link building is good as well you can put content strategically in other website that is relevant to your industry that will then bring back links to your website and they will then convert on your website so to 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 rank on website to rank on google you just basically need to do good seo sounds like a lot of work how long does it normally take to rank on google it depends on the, the, the power of your website, as in if you're a big brand and you do the right things, you produce the right content, it can be a lot easier for you to rank. And then there's certain key phrases that are very competitive that would take longer. So, but to answer your question, it, when you start SEO, you need at least three to six months to be able to get good results if you're new to the whole concept. So it needs time to marinate to be able to really rank. Uh, if it's paid search, as I mentioned earlier on, you can rank immediately if you write, have the right keywords and you're paying for it, you'll be straight to number one for paid search for Google Ads. But for SEO, you need a couple of months. You need to manage your expectation. If you're not a reputable website, it takes longer. But if you're a reputable website, it, you can rank in a few days. So for senior leaders and business owners, the key question alongside obviously deciding between SEO and paid advertising is, should I hire somebody in house to run this for me or should I outsource it to a digital marketing agency? What would be your recommendation? That's a good question. It, it all comes down to the skill availability to you. So you have good agencies out there and good consultants that can do SEO for you. And you also have the option of hiring people in-house. The size of your website also matters. If you have a website with thousands of pages, then you need that manpower, that capacity. So if you're able, in my opinion, if you need to balance um, 
having someone in house and having an expert externally. I know this sounds counterintuitive because I'm a consultant, but the, the most important thing is if you have the skill in house, then you have that person fully focused and dedicated to you. But when there's capacity requirement that you need to do something that you can't do in-house, then you can get outsourced help with it. It depends on your industry, the availability of skills you have, and the, competitive, the competitiveness of the industry you work in. But in my experience, most organizations outsource some part of their SEO to consultants and some part they do in-house. It's a, it's a hybrid approach. So for example, if you want to do technical SEO, you don't necessarily need to hire someone in-house to do technical SEO for you. You can hire a consultant like myself to do technical SEO for you. And then the implementation side of things, you can then do in-house. And then in the content production side of things, you need to look at, do you have the skill and capability to produce those content internally or do you outsource it? A good example is YouTube SEO, like producing YouTube. Some marketing organizations do not have that skill internally. Then you can outsource to someone that has the skill to produce those SEO content from a video perspective and help you deliver the content to your customers and your users. So it depends on your budget and the, the level of your SEO within the industry. But ultimately, I, I recommend having a hybrid approach where you have in-house capability and outsource certain speciality to experts that have years of experience that can complement your team, your internal team, yeah. You've mentioned quite a few different types of costs there, so it sounds really expensive. How much does SEO cost? The cost of SEO depends on if you're insourcing or outsourcing. So if you have, for example, if you have an SEO team of say an SEO manager, an SEO executive, you'd be looking at between the 60 to $100,000 if you're a big organization, but you can equally outsource some portion of those work to external agencies and they can charge you a monthly retainer. Again, it goes back to your budget and what you're looking to achieve. Ultimately, you want to use SEO to create the foundation of your content production and then PPC sits on top of it. But the mistake I see with most organizations is they just go all out for paid search Google ads without having that foundation content. So it depends on, on your organization, but in, in my experience, you could outsource your SEO to a consultant on a monthly retainer or you could hire someone permanently. So the cost essentially is the cost that you pay the salary of your employee plus the tools that they need to execute that. But with an agency, you don't have to pay for tools because that's factored into the fee that they charge you. And then it's more on a pay as you go basis. So balancing it up is, is, is a good thing. Having someone in house that you're paying salary to and then outsourcing certain task that the in-house person cannot uh, execute to the external agency or consultant, those would then help you with, with the, the, reduce the cost essentially. But if you can get a very skilled person as a full-time employee within your company, then that's the, the, a more cost-effective approach. Lots of food for thought there. Thank you very much for sharing your expertise with us today. You're welcome. Thank you. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing and clicking on the bell notification. Thank you. Bye.